when God says um, to you and I, do you believe me? We often say, well, I believe in you. But believing believing you says I've got to do something, right? Um, let, let me use a story to explain this. Way back in the 1800s, there was a guy named Jean Gravelot. Uh, he's a great blonde. I brought some pictures of him here, I think. Okay, um, so this is uh, Horseshoe Falls, Niagara Falls, and Jean Gravelot is like the, one of these daredevil types. He's an evil Knievel, if you know who that is. Uh, and he, he decides he's going to cross Niagara Falls on a tightrope. Okay, so they have some pictures. Here he is. All right, so the great Blondin is his name, um, and he has big, bushy blonde hair, and he's going to cross Niagara Falls on a tightrope. So, uh, and they, you know, they they promote this, and and on the day of the big event, I think it's 1859, um, there's 10,000 people on the Canadian side and 10,000 people on the American side, and they're all going to watch this guy cross. Niagara Falls on a tightrope, which if you've been up there, it's it's big. It's not a small little thing. It is a massive place and it's loud and amazing and one it's beautiful and he's going to cross. So they've come to see this guy die. And by the way, if you fall, you're not okay, right? You don't fall and go, well, that's okay, right? No, you fall and it's like a washing machine full of daggers, right? You're just going to, one guy goes over in a barrel one time, over Niagara Falls in a barrel and all they find is his arm. All right. So yeah, uh, this is, yeah. Okay. So, so the great Blondin, he gets up there and uh, he goes out on this tight. Remember 1859, pretty, you know, pretty, I mean, they, they don't have, he had to make the rope himself. He couldn't run to Walmart and buy a, you know, this long hundreds of foot tight rope. I don't think you can do that now. I mean, he had to make this rope uh, and he made it as tight as he could, but they said it swayed out there a little bit. So he's walking out on this tight rope and everybody's just, you know, it's so intense watching him out there walking this tightrope that's swaying. It's wet, right, with all the falls and the, it's all misty. Uh, and he gets across the other side and they scream and yell, wow, you're amazing, you're amazing. And then he says, I'm not done. And he turns around and he goes back to the American side. And by that time, he's a hero. He's amazing. Oh, my goodness. You did the impossible twice. This is incredible. And then he says, I'm not done. I'm not done. Bring me the wheelbarrow. And he throws his balancing pole that he had to keep him balanced. He throws that into the water and he says, bring me the wheelbarrow. And out they bring this 1859 wheelbarrow. If it looks like mine, I have today, you know, it's duct tape in places and or, 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 they bring it out to him and he holds, you know, he has the wheelbarrow right next to him there. And he says, how many of you believe I can cross Niagara Falls pushing this wheelbarrow across this rope? And uh, they raise their hands. We believe, we believe. And he's like, how many of you believe? He's a good showman, right? How many of you believe? And he's like, we believe, we believe. And now they're chanting, we believe, we believe. 10,000 people, we believe, we believe. He says, I'm so glad you all believe because I only need one volunteer who will get in the wheelbarrow. And you heard the, we believe, we believe. And nobody volunteers. Nobody volunteers. Now, I don't know if this whole story exactly happened like this. I don't know if it's perfectly true. If it's not, it should be. Uh, because he says, what's wrong? I thought you said you believed. That's the difference between believing in God and believing him. It's getting in the wheelbarrow. Right? I believe in God. He's like, I'm so glad you believe in me. I need you to go on a mission. Whoa. I believe in you. I'm not so sure I believe you when you say that's going to be the best thing for me. Uh, I'm so glad. Yeah. Do you believe? I believe. I'm so glad you believe because I need you to walk out of that movie like Meg said. And you're like, Ooh, ah, it's kind of embarrassing. And I don't know if I can do that. Right. Maybe. I mean, I believe, but I don't know if I believe enough. Right. When you say keeping my standards is going to make me happy and make me successful. I don't know if I believe you. Do you see the difference? I believe in you. I just don't believe in what you tell me. We do this sometimes by saying, uh, I believe in God. I believe he can save everybody. I just don't know if he can save me. Really? Well, how come he can save everybody, but he can't save you? Well, I'm a little bit of a different case. I've got, you know, uh, really? You know what we've done? And I, I don't know how I can, I want to say this correctly. Uh, we've made our God, 
Jesus, um, we've made him quite wimpy. Um, he's a wimpy God. He can't, he can't do what he says he can do. Right. Um, we're like, well, I mean, he can save a lot of people, but, but I don't know if he can save me. Yeah. In, in the scriptures over and over, it says Je Jehovah is mighty to save, which means he's good at it. Right. He's good at saving. He knows how to do this. In second Nephi two, uh, he, Lehi says to Jacob, I know that you're redeemed because of the righteousness of your redeemer. Not you, him. Jacob, you're going to the celestial kingdom, but it's not because of you. It's because of him. Uh, we say, uh, oh, no, my, my, my child is lost. They're, they're being disobedient. They're off on the wrong path. I'm going to lose them forever. You have, a, you have a God who is mighty to save. He's mighty to save. You can trust him that he can do this. Right. So maybe we should allow him to be more mighty to save in our lives. Maybe we should be like, I trust you so much. I'll get in the wheelbarrow. Let's go. Put me in the wheelbarrow. I have no question about it because you are so good at what you do. You are mighty to save. So here's here's my question for and maybe challenge as we're thinking about President Nel Nelson's statement, you know, let God prevail in your life. Is there anywhere in your life that you believe in God? You believe in him, but you don't believe him. You don't believe him when he says, my way will make you the happiest. Uh, yeah, I trust you, but I don't want to give up this show. I don't want to give up this music. I don't want to give up these movies. You believe in him, but you just don't believe him when he says, my way is the best way. So maybe analyze your life. I'm going to do the same thing. I love what Meg is doing and writing all this down. Like we're going to do something. Analyze your life and say, where can I put more faith in him? Right? When I think about my children who's gone wayward and astray, I next my next thought is, but I have a God who is mighty to save. Right? I know that he'll, he'll, he'll work it out because he is mighty to save. Um, I'm a little bit worried about, oh, uh, you know, my friend group, how they're going to respond to my standards, but I have a God who is mighty to save. So I trust him. I trust him. He is good at it. And then you can kind of hear that statement from God to Moses, how long until they believe me? And you'll hear that change to, thank you. Finally, you believe me. Now I can show you what I can do for you. Let's go to the promised land. Uh, and I leave that in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.